everything was longer than the fight. And Kevin Rooney, the trainer of Mike Tyson, is here with us, and I'm sure you weren't disappointed that everything was longer than the fight. I love it like that, in and out, let's get in and get out. <laughs> there was a long delay before the start of the fight. It seemed to take a little bit of the excitement and electricity out of the live audience waiting for the fight. What was the furor about? Were they simply applying a little gamesmanship trying to upset Mike? Basically, yeah, that's what it was. I mean, they made us think about the way the, the glove, I had tied the glove and there was a little bit of a lump, and I wanted, we wanted to tape it down, and the inspector, who's the boss, he approved it. Then Butch Lewis came back with Hazard, and, they, and he tried to make a big stink about it, and they, they, him, Lewis, and the inspector, the big guy, they had words. I've read in the paper where they try to say, Lewis called uh, Michael faggot. That's that's not that's, that's not true. He showed me and my fighter respect by not saying nothing because I'm not. If he started coming so yelling at me, who knows what's going to happen? You know what I mean? But he, he didn't, and I and I I respected that. His problem was with the inspector, but it was a bunch of malarkey. They were trying to upset the fighter, and it worked against them because it, it upset him enough that he went out there and he did the job on on his fighter. It sounded looking back as though uh, Butch Lewis was trying to buy time for a condemned. <laughs> Man, now tell me about some of the psyching that went on before the fight. It, it, I didn't realize that Mike Tyson seemed to need all of it. Part of it was in meeting Roberto Duran. Then you told him that you had made a bet in which you were betting all of your purses on the knockout. And then you were wearing a cap that said, this one is for Jimmy Jacobs, your late ex-manager. Well, Mike doesn't need that psyching or whatever. These, thi these things just unfolded. Mike invited Roberto Duran to the fight because Don King wouldn't give Roberto Duran tickets to the fight. So when we found that out, when Mike heard that, Mike said, well, I'll give him tickets because he loves Duran. Duran's a great fighter. So he came to visit with Mike, and that souped Mike up, which is good. I like that because now there's another fighter. That keeps him focused, which the whole idea of the camp and the fight is to be a professional and to focus on what you're going to do. What about this little joke about betting all your money on the fight? Yeah, well, <laughs> Mike has a dry sense of humor like me. Now, cause I'm telling you, I'm telling you, saying it now. He, he came out and he said, I did say that. And he was walking into the other room. I said, oh, yeah, hey, Mike, you know, by the way, I bet my purse and your purse on a first-round knockout. But Mike knows that I don't got his <laughs> purse. I don't have his end of it. Maybe he thought I bet my money. I don't know. I've called what Mike Tyson does in the ring brute skill and now we're going to try to show you some of the subtles of boxing as seen through the eyes of Kevin Rooney let's go let's get off the apron Kevin take us through this live action of the fight and what you see and I know this is the first time you've actually seen the fight that's right you might bring it right to him and we're letting the bombs go. That's sending a message. Right there. See, that was a good right hand that missed. He tried to sneak your right hand sphinx. That one missed, obviously. So that's part of the skill part of the brute force. You can't, you can't hit Mike. You can hit him with a clean shot. And when, when they can't hit him, they become you know, like confused and intimidated because they know they're missing. They like get confused subconsciously. Were you surprised that Sphinx didn't throw more jabs? No. Mike got right on him. He made him fight. That was the plan. Right there. See, I left up because that's what hurt him. And then comes the body shot comes. That was the only clinch. Was that Mike's fault, or did you, did you give him a downgrade him for that? No. I work on that. That's something I'm trying to work on, getting him out of the habit of doing that. Now, that body punch that hurt. must have hurt, and that was the start. Yeah, there's a left up because it's That's what hurt. That's what really brought him down. More than the right hand to the body. Was he, just, was he just going down for a rest there, did you think? Well, yeah, he didn't even know where to go. The guy's all over me. He wanted to get, get, out of, get out of the way. Bang. That's where he took his shot. Right there, but it was a good, it was a good right hand. He's out. You know, I remember when he went down like that, because I was looking right up, I knew the fight was over. He was struggling. Up, and then the guy stopped counting, and I thought the count was uh, a little long. Because I remember the guy saying six, and then Frank said six. You're not Seven. very happy there, are you? <laughs> All right, now let's go through slow motion and, 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 and show us where the skill is. For example, There's in the delivering cut. of the punches, we've seen a lot of big guys. They don't punch as hard as Mike. Is it the way he delivers it? Sure, it's the snap. Now he told it would snap with the correct form. 
Which is what? Is it getting the shoulder in? And it's, get, well, it's getting the whole body and, and snapping the shoulder. That's really where it comes from. All right, let's watch this and see. He yeah, throws he, right he, straight through it. Right, he goes right through it. And the right hand of the body is a good snap. Now you see, see the shoulder? See the shoulder muscle snap? The one, that one in miss. <laughs> All right, now, you have obviously been working on him throwing more body punches because he's been remiss, he's leaped into clinches, and he hasn't thrown the body punches. Is he there where you want him on that score yet? No. Oh. You know, he's getting there, but he's not there. Because he doesn't throw that left hook to the body. I want to see that. All right, see, that's a good left double cut. And he's rolling. It looks like he's rolling back and forth. Is that, what, is that how he he's trying to... Yeah, see, you can see the snap. You can see his shoulder snap. That was a pretty good shot. The one that missed was even better. <laughs> okay, now the knockout punch. Describe that. That was a tremendous right uppercut to the opposite side of his face. It shows his, his good power. But watching this tape, you know, Michael Spinks came off the rope after being knocked down the first time. He starts to throw the right hand. Mike makes the little head movement to make him miss, and Spinks shows how smart he is. He, he stopped throwing it because he knew he wasn't going to hit. But I think by doing that and the fact that Mike is going to make him miss, he's off balance a little bit. All right, so he moves away. Mike lets it go hard. And Boom. then he hard. It, it seems that the commitment is so much a part of Mike Tyson. When he commits like that, he's leaving himself open, it seems. But he's making a full commitment to what he's doing. Yes, but he's, but he's not open because we just saw it in slow motion. He made him miss that right hand. Spinks started to throw a hard right hand, and halfway through it, he wanted to stop it because he knew he wasn't going to hit him. And he was off balance, and then Mike had that tremendous snap and hit him on the, other, the, the right side of his face with his right hand, which is wild. What and makes Mike out. such a good finisher? Was it something that he got from Cus? Cus always said, you know, professional fighter, when you got a man hurt, you take him out. You get him out, they get the fight over with. Anything can happen. So there you have the anatomy of a knockout, and there is the anatomy of the man who was knocked out. <laughs>